everyone. It's Nancy at Sipping and Painting Hamden. We're going to be painting this lovely painting today called Light of the Moon. And before we get started, I'll just go through my supplies. I'm going to be using some napkins. I'm going to be using three different sizes of brushes, a small, a medium flat brush and a large, pardon me, a large and a medium flat brush and a small round. I'm gonna be using a variety of paint colors that are uh, just really basic. Red, yellow, blue, white, and black. And I have some water in a water jar. I'm gonna cover my canvas with a little bit of water. I do that because Denver's a very dry place. So go ahead and put some water in your canvas. So you can put your water on your canvas with a water bottle or that I just used as a spritzer. I just spritzed it on. <laughs> I think my mother used to do that. This is how old I am. My mother used to do that when she would iron. She had a little spritzer bottle. Maybe you've seen your grandmother do that. All right. Okay, so we have water in our canvas. And here's the thing about this background. It's a very loose and nondescript background. So I did want to make sure I had plenty of water in my canvas because I want the water to be, I want the paint to be thin. So if your paint is thick like toothpaste, you're going to need to thin it. I like to have my paint for background, the consistency of pancake syrup. So I picked up some blue in my big brush and I'm gonna make some streaks across this general area in my painting. And here's the thing about this painting, it's very impressionistic. And what that means is it's not detailed. It's my painting's gonna look very different than yours and yours is gonna look very different than mine. Neither of us are going to have one that looks exactly like the original. And it, it's a little bit difficult to paint this way sometimes, to paint in such a loose fashion. But it's also really a good challenge. It's a good challenge for me. I'm not used to painting so loose, but that's exactly what I'm going to do here. All right, so I have blue streaks on in the center area and stop the video at any time when you need to catch up, okay? I am gonna rinse my brushes between switching colors, but I need to warn you, I, I'm gonna be switching colors a bunch for the rest of this background and some of them might just overlap. Keep your paint thin, okay? Now what I wanna do is, do you see this green there's green in the background, there's green down here, a little green up here. So to make that green, I'm gonna pick up some yellow. I'm gonna mix it with a little bit of my blue. And I didn't even clean my brush in between, to be honest with you, because my brush had blue on it. And this green is gonna be real nice, even if it mixes a little bit. I'm gonna put it around up in here. And I, what I see is that those strokes are not lines like I was doing before. They look like the backgrounds of some trees. Behind these branches, there's some suggestion of other far away foliage. So I'm gonna do that. Because it's farther back, I'm gonna add a little more blue to my paint, but it's still green. And I'm just going to put on some dark green in this loose kind of leafy kind of way. Right here, I see it in this general area. Now, anytime your paint's too thin, add a drop of, or two of water. Just add a drop or two of water. 
thin it out. Don't add a lot of water. You don't want it to drip, but a drop or two will be very nice. And I also like to paint the tops and the sides eventually so that it wraps around the canvas. That's called the gallery wrap. And when you do that, you won't need to buy a frame, put it in a frame. Back here, I see more green and here and here, but it's more straight lines. So I know this is hard. This is hard to, you have to look, go back and forth and whatever you see, paint what you see and just know it's not gonna be the same. It won't be exactly the same. And guess what? That's not only is that okay, that's great because your personality is gonna come shining through. All right, so I'm gonna paint what I see where I see it. There is some orange over that, but for now, I'm not worried about that orange. And behind this, there's some green, more water. Definitely see green down here over the blue. And it's kind of scribbled on. A little bit higher here. A little bit here. It's a very unusual way to paint. And I know it's a little bit harder to just paint. I'm looking behind the wind, wind, wind the women. The women dance, I'm looking behind them. What colors do I see way back in the background? That's what I'm trying to do here. I had a little bit of green on my brush, but it was mostly water. So I'm just using that to kind of blend these colors together a little bit more. Now, one thing that's really interesting about this painting, I like, Oh, hold on, I'll tell you in a second. I'm not quite there yet. I need a little bit more color here, but it's behind her skirt. And I have no idea what color is behind her skirt. So I get to make it up. I get to pretend I know and make it up. So I'm gonna say it's, there's some green back there. And I'm gonna keep it thin. And the reason I'm gonna keep it thin is it's just easier to dry that way. It's easier to put on and it's also easier to dry. All right, so what I want to tell you about this painting is there's a lot of black in it too. And so I'm putting on some of the colors, but then some of it I'm going to cover a little bit with some black to try to darken up this forest a little bit. use a little bit more water. You can see that the general idea is this is the underpainting. This is the very farthest back layer. The very farthest back layer. So does it have to be perfect? No, no, not at all. It just has to have all the colors that the original has. And that they don't even have to be in the exact same place. It's just giving you suggestions of color. All right, now what I want you to notice is there's black here in this area here, and then it goes down the side and it darkens that corner a little bit too. So I'm gonna pick up some black and I'm going to keep it thin, keep your paint thin. If you need to mix a little bit of water into your black, do that, but keep it thin. We want it like pancake syrup when we're doing these backgrounds, okay? So, darkening up the background, but I'm not going to do it perfectly if there's blue sh go, uh, showing through. That's even better. You see the, there's black over on the side of her head too, so a little bit of black, but I'm not covering the blue completely solidly. This is a very loose painting, very loose. I mean by loose is the, the instructions, the details 
aren't real hard and fast. There's a whole lot of kind of sort of going on. And that can be hard for beginning painters, but trust your gut. Just put the paint where you kind of see it. And if you're not sure, just try it. The worst that can happen, the worst that can happen is that you um, have to put white over it later and start over, right? We use white like correction fluid. You can paint over anything if it's, if you let it dry and then put white over it and it's like you have a brand new canvas. So don't worry, don't, don't worry too much about what you're doing. Enjoy the process. I just, I have a dirty brush right now, it's just dirty. And so I'm using what's left on it to darken any areas that need a little darkening, but there's very little paint on my brush right now. Very little, see that? I can even dip it in water and just make that go a little bit farther. I'm also gonna paint the sides as I go because if your painting wraps around the canvas, it's called a gallery wrap. It means that you won't have to buy a frame. You'll save money and it looks a little bit more modern to hang it on your wall that way. And if you change your mind later and you want to put it in a frame, you still can. But while the trend is simple, minimalistic, it'll look great. Just paint around the whole sides as you go. All right. So this area was a little dark too, not as dark as this side, but it's got some darkness in there. And the bottom had some darkness. Yeah, I think that's pretty good. All right, maybe what I'm missing is a little bit more green. So I'm just gonna paint a little bit more green. A little bit more green behind here. Just kind of random strokes that if you saw them behind a plant, they might kind of sort of look like foliage. All right, I think we're good. I think we're good. All right, now what I want to tell you is that this painting, well, it has a moon, obviously. It also has these blobs of orange. Do you see that? And what that tells me, those blobs of orange, is that someone, besides three, three women, one, two, three, there may be two other dancing figures that are moving so quickly and are so far back, you can't see any details. They're just orange, they're just orange. So I'm gonna put those in as if they're just orange. Now my painting is drying really quickly. I can see it's still shiny here, that tells me it's wet. Still shiny here, that tells me it's wet. But all this is dry, which is great because when it's dry, I can paint over it. So do you see that? I'm gonna paint, I'm gonna mix a little yellow and a little red to make orange. That's a more reddish orange, so I'm gonna Try to keep that in mind, a little more red. Maybe it's a fire. We don't know what they're dancing around. Who knows? We don't even know what kind of a dance they're doing. We can guess and you can tell a story about it. We had, a, uh, we had some women in here paint this, um, women from a synagogue and they, they, what they saw in this painting was Miriam in the Bible dancing with the women. Um, which is a really lovely story and a lovely idea, right? And then we had another group of women who paint, who came in and painted this painting and they saw it as uh, honoring the winter or summer solstice. I can't remember which one. So uh, honestly more of a pagan idea. So we don't really know. We don't know what this original artist had in mind. Um, to me, what it means is to me, this painting represents just kind of a spiritual, beautiful connection, uh, one woman to another and like, and uh, how joyful it can be to be with women, like a sisterhood. And so to me, it's all about sisterhood, but this could be whatever you want it to be. You decide, you, you decide who are these people and why are they dancing? 
So I have orange here, I have orange here, like that. Then I have some up here, see that? So I'm gonna put that in. Now my painting doesn't have to look exactly like hers. Uh, hers is inspired by something or someone. Mine is inspired by some by this one. It doesn't have to be perfect, and I have no intention of it being perfect. All right, so we've got this nice background on. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick up my medium brush. I'm gonna put it in water, get it a little wet, knock the water off, and then I'm gonna go into white. And then I'm gonna put my moon right about here. It's not in the center, it's off to the right. It's a little bit below the top. I'm gonna to say the center of my moon is gonna be here. And the way I'm gonna create a full moon, a circle, that I got a blob, is I'm going to start really small at a dot, and then I'm going to circle very slowly and gradually, and I'm going to stick to that circle. I'm just going to keep going around and around, making the circle a little bit bigger. First a dime, then a nickel, then a quarter, then a half dollar size. But if I go slow enough, I can correct the circle with each time around. And then when I'm done, it's not going to be a perfect circle. It's not, but that's okay. It's okay. It doesn't have to be perfect. Even a perfect circle, even a full moon is not a perfect circle because they have craters. They, it, the moon has craters. And what I notice too is when I'm looking up at the moon, if it's the night before the moon or the night after the moon, Sometimes by, to my eye, it still looks pretty full. But um, I think these women, their dance, their happiness, their joy has something to do with the full moon. That's what I'm guessing. So like I said, I put it on our calendar frequently at winter solstice and summer solstice and, and some of our customers come in and paint it for that reason. They really, really uh, like that, that it honors the changing of the seasons. Um, the, uh, well, the solstices. So you can also, if you don't want to do your circle like that, starting small and circling out until you get something that is pretty good, but not perfect. What you could do is you could take a mayonnaise jar, paint around that jar lid. It's the perfect size, or mason jar lid, perfect size. Or any kind of jar lid, or around a mug, or a cup. All of that works really well. So this is just a nice white clear moon. Sometimes when we paint a moon, I'll show you, it's kind of fun. Sometimes when I paint a moon, I like to add a little bit of black on my finger, and then I come in and I put some craters on, and I try to emphasize one side more than another. Now the original one doesn't have that on, but again, this is an inspiration. It's not exactly that. And it just kind of adds a fun, I put that those craters in the form of a crescent, it just adds a little fun uh, detail to the moon. And I can, with what's left on my finger, which is practically nothing, I can just, just poke a little bit more on the brighter side. But that, to me, that really says moon. You could do it that way or not. You don't have to do it at all. That's just something I like to do. If you don't like it, there's an easy fix for that, very easy. You just pick up your brush, a little more white paint, and then you just paint over it. That's an easy fix for that. Wait till it's uh, a little dry though so that you don't just have a gray moon. But, oh, I can have a gray moon, who cares? That's kind of fun too. You do you, you do the kind of moon you like, but just know that that's that's some tips. I might go over that later and 
you can do whatever you want to your moon. <coughs> but a little, a little texture is kind of fun. You decide your moon, your world, you decide how you want your moon to look. I like a little texture in mine. Plus it's fun to finger paint. How many times in the world have you been allowed to finger paint, huh? I mean, probably you haven't done that since you were in preschool. So I think that's kind of fun. All right, there's my moon. Okay, so we're gonna let this dry a little bit. Uh, and we're gonna go ahead and make some I'm gonna take my, uh, make some of these uh, branches. So I'm gonna take my small brush and I'm gonna pick up some lemony yellow. I'm gonna add it to some of my blue. Now those branches are more yellow than the other green that may, we made. It's a little more yellowy green. So, and it makes them stick out more that way. More lime green. So I'm gonna go ahead and make up some yellow and I'm gonna, I'll come back down later with a little bit of black through the center, but I wanna show you the general idea with just this lime green or this green. I'm gonna come out and I'm just gonna make lots of these little, I'm gonna pull lots of these little um, uh, fronds from the center. I can come through later and put black through the center to make it stand out but the fronds are gonna be like this. And I don't know if this is a willow tree. I don't know if it's in the jungle and it's some tree I don't know. I don't know. Do I care? Not at all. Now you can go back and forth between your bluer green and your yellower green. And you can add white to it too, so that it stands out a little bit more. You might need to add a little bit more water. My paint's getting kind of thick because it's been sitting out, but just do that general idea and you can alternate the kinds of the colors a bit. Alternate the colors a bit. And if you didn't blend it up perfectly, even better. Look at that. It sticks out really nice. But that's the general idea. And we're going to cover the top of the sky with this, these kinds of willows or whatever they are. And change up your green, add a little more yellow to a batch or a little more white to a batch, or a little more blue to a batch. And let's have each one of them slightly different than the last one, okay? Slightly different. So this one's... And different lengths too. Let's do them different lengths. All right. So go ahead and work on that. And I step back a bit and I noticed that I can't really see those. So I'm gonna I'm gonna tweak them a bit. I always want to step back and look at your work from farther away. Make sure that you can see what it is you're painting and then it's the way you want it to be. We can't really see what we're doing close up. When our nose is in it, we just can't really see it. So you have to step back about five feet or so to really see what you're doing. And if you know you can't step up five feet, if your room's not that big, however many feet you're able to, to step back, please do that because it's your pain's gonna turn a lot better if you if you do. Uh, if you've ever seen a Van Gogh or a Monet up close, they look terrible up close, honestly, they really do. Um, but from five feet away, oh my gosh, or even 10 feet away, unbelievable, so gorgeous. And it's just because we can't really see what we're doing when we're painting. We have to look at it from a proper viewing distance, the way other people are gonna see it. When they come in your house and they look at it from across the room doesn't matter what it looks like up close. And to be honest with you, most impressionistic paintings are terrible, absolutely terrible up close. So 
Step back five or 10 feet. Look at it. I would say do that several times while you paint a painting. And uh, once again, I'm just trying to get a different shade of green every time I do this so that these stand out. Each one stands out a bit. Same shape, same idea, but I would just want each one to have its own personality. Each branch needs to shine, just like people. People need to shine, paint needs to shine. Anytime your paint's getting too, too thick, it's like peanut butter, water it down so it's a little more manageable. Mix in a few drops of water. Maybe some of these are at a slant. Maybe, who knows? Why not? Why wouldn't they be? Try to make sure that they're different lengths. We don't want anything to look too perfect. Nature is never perfect. It should never be symmetrical. Unless it's, uh, you know, veins in a plant or something that are symmetrical, but know your plant in that case. But usually when it's things like branches, you don't want symmetry, you want, Natural, you want random. Placement. And there are a couple of these hanging over the moon too. Even the moon gets a little decoration. One more and I think I'm done. I just did that because I had green on my brush and I thought, why not? You don't have to do that. A little bright, a little blue over it'll calm that down a bit. All right, so I've got foliage, some kind of dark stuff happening back there. I don't know what that is. It's kind of like a black scribble and I don't really know. Maybe that's, maybe that's one of these with just far away. I don't really know, but I'm gonna go ahead and just put in something like a little foliage way back there. Um, I don't really know what that is. And frankly, I don't even care, but I just noticed that there's some darkness back there. So whatever it is, no worries. All right. Now, one thing I am gonna do, we did talk about this, is I'm gonna chisel my brush, that fine brush, to a point and I've got black paint on it and I'm just gonna come through really carefully 
And I'm going to pull a stem through each one of those. Or a branch rather. Just then, just to define the center Oops. or close to the center. Doesn't have to be perfect. You really need your paint to be like ink, real thin. I was using it too thick and it either wasn't coming off my brush or came off too thick. But make make a little batch of your black paint like ink so it moves more easily for you. Oh, that was crooked, that's okay. Nothing wrong with crooked. You start to get off center, just don't go back and fix it. Just go with it and just keep on going. All right. <laughs> no idea what that scribble is back there, that black scribble, you see that? It almost looks like she's, maybe she's holding something. I have no idea what that is. And I don't even know if I want it my painting, but whatever, it's there. Okay. Now we've got these beautiful women to paint. And they're not gonna be hard. You're gonna be quite amazed at how easy this, this is gonna be. Because we're not gonna be perfectionists, right? So this woman is mostly orange. Her head, however, looks mostly white. So I wanna make sure my brushes are very clean, very clean. And I'm gonna pick up some white paint. <clears throat> and first I'm just gonna draw an oval where her head is gonna be. So her head is gonna be right about here. Same thing on both campuses, right about here. Now, if you don't get the exact same place, who cares? No one's ever gonna see the original. And I'm just taking a brush. I would take a round brush if I were you, one that looks round at the tip. I'm using a square and I'm regretting it right now. A flat, I mean. Uh, but use a brush that's the same all the way around. This flat one, that was kind of a mistake. But anyway, you wanna make an oval, like an egg shape, okay? Make an egg shape. Use a brush like that that's the same all the way around and you'll you'll have better luck with making an oval. That's okay. Remember I said I'm not gonna be a perfectionist about this because it's a very loose painting. It's a very impressionistic painting. It's not supposed to be perfect. If you make it perfect, you're missing the whole point. I'm gonna go ahead and put in all the little heads just to show you the placement. This one's gonna be covered with green, but right now it's white. Little, little eggs, little eggs. Her head is gonna be smaller because she's farther away. Then this one is a little bigger because she's a little closer. And make them like the shape of an egg. Does it have to be perfect? Heck no, definitely not. This one is the biggest one, so her head should be the biggest. Okay. This one, medium, because she's a little bit behind. And this one's far in the back. These movements don't even have a head. All right. <clears throat> I'm not gonna worry about her head yet. I'll put colors on their faces after I get their dress colors mixed. Notice how this one is a combination of yellow and red and orange. Yellow and red together make orange, right? So the area between my yellow and my red here, when I swirl them together, I've got orange. So I'm gonna use all three of those colors for this woman and her dress. But notice how one side of her dress is lit up by the color of the moon, so it's lighter, lighter over there. So, all right, let's first, I'm, okay, so I've got some, um, 
orange of my brush. She's got to have a neck. She's got to have a little bit of a neck, okay? So put on a little bit of a neck. About the, on my canvas, about the width of my finger. And then you can put some on her face too, right? And just whatever you do, don't do it perfectly. And then from her neck, let me show you the shape of her shoulders and chest. She has shoulders, right? And then her chest comes down to a waist. Maybe a little bulge there for the breasts. Then she has a waist. And then this is just loose, 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 loose. I'm just gonna do the outline for now. And it's loose and fluffy. And then it goes up at an angle, her skirt. And then it comes in again and goes right back up to her waist. Now remember on this side of her skirt, it's more red. You can just scribble that in, but not perfectly. Don't make it perfect. It's just more red here, more red. Remember this, this painting is not about perfectionism. This is about keeping things loose. This is impressionistic. That can be really hard for people like you and like me, maybe. I, I have a hard time with it sometimes, making things so loose, but it's a good exercise in relaxing and not worrying. Don't worry, don't worry. Don't worry, be happy. Then on the other side, her it's more yellow. Now I'm doing her dress and her bodice, like her uh, torso up here earlier, then I am going to be doing her arms. I don't know why, no particular reason. But then scribble in this side a little more yellow. And where those two colors meet, that makes orange all by itself. You don't even have to worry about it. That's the light of the moon. That's what the painting's called, light of the moon, light of the moon. Now her arms, just remember that her arms, um, this one's more yellow, that one's more red uh, because of the side. Just go up from her shoulder, just go right up from her shoulder and then go to about the middle of her head for the forearm, okay? Middle of her head, make, make it coming out of the shoulder a bit wider. And then her arm is going to wrap around her head, around her head like that. And then the hand, the hand shape is just like um, a banana kind of. That's the best way I can describe it. And then a little bit more color maybe. Okay. Now on the other one, paint the other side the same way, but with red. Make it a little wider where it comes out of the shoulder, about halfway up toward her ear. And then comes in. The forearm is thinner than the um, shoulder. And then this hand, same kind of thing, just like a little banana or something like that, okay? And you can go back in with different shades, but just remember in general, in general, the side of the her body is darker because it's farther away from the moon and this side is lighter. And you can mix some of this yellow with white. I noticed that this one has some white in it. A little bit of white. A little bit of white, but don't make anything too perfect, okay? Don't, just don't make it too perfect. Just let it flow, just let it, 
Wouldn't it be messy? It's it's reflected light. Reflected light. And this side of her face, maybe it's gonna have a little red in it because it's the darker side. Maybe that's her hair, I don't know. Why not? It would just make sense that this side would be a little darker and the other side would be a little lighter. All right. Now, so she is all yellow and red and orange. She has all these colors going on. And you can come back and tweak her dress all you want, but do look at it from far away. Make sure it's what you think it is. And remember, no one's ever gonna see the original. They're just gonna see yours and they're gonna think you're a genius. This painting is an inspiration. It's not, you know, you're doing your own interpretation and that's what you want. All right, now her face is definitely thinner or thicker. This one's much more elegant. You can always come back in later and you can, you can tweak. I can make her, the side of her head a little smaller. You know, there's no limit to what you can do later. Just don't worry about it now, okay? Just, just don't worry about it now. All right. Okay, so this one, she's green. Remember all those uh, colors we were making on the branches? That's, that's her, the whole thing, start to finish. She has those colors, just like we did for this lady, but she's all these colors. So I'm gonna use all that, those different greens that I had mixed up because she is that. Don't use the same one, go back and forth. Okay, remember, so little neck, she's gotta have a little neck and then she's gotta have some shoulders and her torso is shaped. I don't know what, how to describe this shape, um, it's not quite an egg, but wider at the shoulders, thinner at the waist, wider at the shoulders, thinner at the waist. And her arms also are going up. I think it's a very happy occasion. Whatever they're celebrating, whatever they are honoring, Whatever they are dancing to, these are happy women. And I think when those uh, folks came in and they were saying it was Miriam and her timbrels, if you are someone who is interested in the Bible, that would make a lot of sense. If you are someone who really, who celebrates the solstices, you, you may feel this way then. So you, you imagine whatever it is you're celebrating with your friends. I had a bunch of friends come in and paint this with me one time. We actually, <laughs> I have to say, uh, we're, we all pay attention to politics, me and my friends, and uh, it was a number of years ago, and we had lost a big election um, that we cared about, that we all cared about. And so we got together and we painted this to honor our sisterhood um, and to just kind of forget about or troubles. So it's a beautiful thing. You just paint what you love. All right. So this lady in front, she's the same. She is the same. But notice how she has more variety. She has yellower yellow. She has deeper green. So same thing here. Okay. So I'm just going to have to mix up more green, some a little bit more vibrant yellow, some a little bit more deep blue green, but she's got the same kinds of colors going on. Okay, so I'm mixing that up right now. And she she's a little bigger than this. She's bigger than this one, but she's not as big as this one, right? So I've got to give her, first she needs an, a head, right? So is that, if that's not perfect, who cares, right? I can come back and tweak it and she needs a neck. And then she needs shoulders. And then shoulders. And then her, she has one arm going up from her shoulder up. 
and then forearm and then hand. Then her other arm is coming down in front over her skirt. So I'm gonna first make her skirt. And, ooh, I messed that up, didn't I? All right, so this skirt is gonna go in front of that one. I wanna make it so that her skirt has those billowy ruffles at the bottom. Just kind of neatening it up a bit. Just a bit, or you can make them jagged, you decide. You're a person, you decide. Okay, all right. Now this arm definitely goes more in front. She has some light on her shoulder. And then her arm comes down and then goes down. And then her hand comes down like that. So I think I'm pretty much done with this painting, but I just wanna encourage you to step back and look at yours from across the room and see if you like it. If you can't see one of the figures enough, add a little highlight to one side of it like this, right? Just add a little highlight. Um, add a little highlights on the side facing the moon and make that a little bit brighter um, and that'll help you see your person sticking out of these colors more. Um, and plus the, the moon side should be a little bit brighter all over, right? In general, that's the idea. And she has moon, she's right under the moon, this one. So she's gonna be silhouetted a little bit differently. She's gonna have a little bit of light on each side maybe on a pleat or two of her skirt. Maybe she's gonna have a little silhouette on the top of her head. Seems like this one should have a little silhouette on the top of her head too. Think about where your place color placements are and just think, you know, it is my person highlighted enough on the side by the moon? Is the side facing the other side, the darker side, is it a little darker? That's really all we're going for. Because this painting is not about women dancing, it's about the light of the moon. That's why the painting is called the light of the moon. <laughs> The women dancing are just showing us all the light from the moon and how it would fall differently on their bodies, on their clothing, on their faces. But it's really about the light of the moon.
So I like to just step back, look at it and ask myself, am I properly painting the light on the correct side? And am, am I adding enough to honor the idea that this is the light of the moon? I could probably play with this all day, but I just want to thank you so much for painting with me today. I hope you enjoyed painting this sweet little painting called Light of the Moon. And I hope that you're going to be proud of the one that you painted, knowing that no one's ever going to see the original. Yours is unique and beautiful and says exactly what you want to say in your painting. And uh, if you want to send us a picture, my Email address is Hamden, H-A-M-P-D-E-N, like the street in Denver, SIP, S-I-P, and then the letter N, paint, P-A-I-N-T, at gmail.com. And I would love to see what you painted. So if you're watching this on YouTube and you want to send me a little picture of what you painted, I'd be so honored. Uh, and I am Nancy at Hamden, SIP and paint at gmail.com. And um, I'm at Sipping and Painting Hamden. We do classes every single day of the year when it's not a pandemic going on. Um, and except for Thanksgiving, that's the only day we all take off. Um, but yeah, I'd love for you to come in and paint with me when it's when the pandemic's over. Uh, for a live class, we also do some watercolors. We do Bob Ross, we do Paint Your Pet. We do all kinds of fun classes here. Um, kids camp during the summer. So um, when it's not a pandemic going on, uh, which is right now, this while I'm painting this, um, but come on in and paint with me. I would love to see you. During the pandemic, we are selling our paint kits for $20. It has everything in it. You need to paint one painting with me. Everything I used here today is in, is in our paint kit, selling $20. And uh, then you can watch them for free on YouTube or you can sign up for our live classes on our website. Those are also really fun. And the nice thing about the live classes is you get more one-on-one -on -one help. Uh, because I can stop what I'm doing and I can look at your painting on the computer and I can give you feedback that I can't do on YouTube. So uh, if you want to paint along with me and get feedback on every step of the way, consider signing up for our uh, live classes, okay? And uh, yeah, because um, it's really worth it to be able to get feedback. And I learn from you, you learn from me, it's all good. Um, and maybe there's some tips and techniques you want to show me. I'd love to love to learn from you as well. All right, so thanks again for painting with me, and I hope you enjoyed painting Light of the Moon. Don't forget to sign your name. I always sign my name way down here in the bottom corner. Ooh, ooh, just my little initials. If you put your initials in the bottom right-hand corner, then when you, um, when I see your painting in the Museum of Natural History, sorry, the Museum of Modern Art or the Denver Art Museum or someplace around town that I'll know exactly who you are and I'll be really proud of you. All right, thanks so much for painting with me. Have a great night. Ciao.